after understanding lipid metabolism, how it can be broken down, how it can be synthesized, it's really important to understand how this is all regulated. Because remember, in the body, we have a set of processes, but we don't want too much of something happening because it's going to disrupt the homeostatic state of our body. We want everything to happen in its required amounts without overshooting or undershooting. So for lipid metabolism, we have this key regulatory process in place where we have this enzyme and it's called acetyl-CoA carboxylase. And like many other enzymes within biochemistry, this enzyme is regulated by phosphorylation and dephosphorylation. In this case, when you phosphorylate acetyl-CoA carboxylase, in short form we refer to it as ACC, but when it is phosphorylated, it is rendered inactive. So it cannot perform its function. And we'll go over its function, but we need to understand that in this case, phosphorylation is making it inactive. Now, if we remove the phosphate group, and of course, we are going to do that through a phosphatase enzyme. Phosphatases remove phosphate groups. As a result, we are going to get acetyl-CoA carboxylase, which is the active form. So when it is phosphorylated, it is inactive. When it does not have that phosphate group, it is activated. So what does it do when it's activated? Essentially, what it does is, it converts acetyl-CoA into malonyl-CoA. But what's the purpose of converting acetyl-CoA into malonyl-CoA? Because what malonyl-CoA does is that it goes on to inhibit a, a, a protein enzyme. What protein enzyme does it inhibit? Well, it inhibits the protein enzyme found in the carnitine shuttle. So. The carnitine shuttle, once again, it is a pathway that transports long-chain fatty acids from the cytosol to the inner mitochondrial matrix for beta oxidation to produce energy. But when we have the production of malonyl-CoA, malonyl-CoA, it has an inhibitory effect on this enzyme right over here, which is referred to as carnitine acyltransferase 1. Now, carnitine acyltransferase 1, we have to understand, is responsible for the conversion from having uh, this fatty acid with an, a fatty acid that has been activated with the coenzyme A group and attaching carnitine onto that fatty acid and then transporting it through a transport protein referred to as carnitine acyl trans carnitine acyl carnitine translocase and when it brings it in that carnitine is once again removed through this second enzyme and we get our activated fatty acid which is going to be broken down via beta oxidation to produce FADH2 and NADH which will go on to the electron transport chain to produce ATP via oxidative phosphorylation but what this pathway does is it regulates beta oxidation in a way. So when this enzyme is active and it produces malonyl CoA, we this malonyl CoA inhibits carnitine acyltransferase. So these fatty acids they cannot get inside the mitochondrial matrix, and if they cannot get inside the mitochondrial matrix, beta oxidation will not occur, and you will not see the production of FADH2 and NADH. So it essentially regulates whether or not we are going to break down lipids or if we are going to break down lipids. Now, a key thing to note of, make note of is how do we phosphorylate it? Well, the phosphorylation process is very similar to other phosphorylation processes within biochemistry in which we have ATP and it is converted into ADP because that phosphate group is going to be attached to acetyl-CoA carboxylase, making it inactive. This reaction right over here of phosphorylating acetyl-CoA carboxylase is done by a kinase. And remember, a kinase is a class of enzymes that is responsible for phosphorylation with the help of ATP. Now, let's think about this question over here. 
if glucose levels in the body are low, what would happen in regard to lipid metabolism regulation? So glucose levels are low. The one thing that we need to understand is that in our body, glucose is going to be our first source of energy. If glucose is the first source of energy, the second source of energy is our lipids. And then the final source of energy is going to be our proteins. So if we are low on glucose, remember, glucose is broken down through glycolysis to produce ATP later on in the TCA as well and electron transport chain. But if we don't have glucose, we need an alternative pathway instead of glycolysis to produce energy because our body is essentially low on energy because we don't have glucose for glycolysis. So we're going to rely on fats. So if we need energy from fats, lipids must be broken down. But how are we going to break down those lipids? Does acetyl-CoA carboxylase need to be active or does it need to be inactive? Remember, if we're producing malonyl-CoA, mal malonyl-CoA is inhibiting carnitine acyl trans transferase, which is inhibiting the breakdown of fatty acids because they can't enter the mitochondrial matrix. So if we want to break down fatty acids, acetyl-CoA carboxylase has to be inactive. It has to be phosphorylated because when it is inactive, it is not producing malonyl-CoA. And if it's not producing malonyl-CoA, the carnitine shuttle will not be inhibited. So to recap, if glucose levels in the body are low, acetyl-CoA carboxylase is going to be inactive and it's going to be phosphorylated. So we don't get the production of malonyl-CoA. And as a result, this carnitine shuttle system will be active and fatty acids will be transported to the mitochondrial matrix where beta oxidation will occur and we will get energy production for the body.